During World War II, Germany, despite ultimately being defeated, demonstrated a high degree of resource integration and nearly reached the pinnacle of weapon and equipment potential development. The indigenous SDKFZ-251 armored vehicle is such a weapon family, with at least 30 variants developed over several years of combat, including the tank destroyer SDKFZ-251-22. As a medium-sized half-track vehicle weighing about 8 tons, the SDKFZ-251 is more reliable in terms of size and carrying capacity than many light armored vehicles and is suitable for conversion into other types of vehicles. Originally, German designers installed a 37mm anti-tank gun in the position of the original machine gun, creating the SDKFZ-251-10, as well as a model with a captured French 47mm anti-tank gun. This configuration matched the early war standard of German anti-tank firepower, but quickly fell behind in the face of continually improving armor. Instead of installing a door-knocking brick, it was better to equip a 20mm machine gun to clear the battlefield. In 1941, after the German army began equipping the Pak 4075mm gun, this artillery piece quickly gained recognition and was subsequently modified and installed on various vehicles, primarily on light and medium tank chassis in the early stages, as the mainstream German thinking still emphasized armored protection capability. By 1944, the increasing strength of enemy armor and the declining anti-tank capabilities became a major problem that the German army needed to address. Many self-propelled anti-tank gun projects were initiated during this period, and the SDKFZ 251-22 was produced and put into service in the same year. At this time, the German army had completely retracted its forces and assumed a defensive posture. The half-track vehicles, originally used for transporting troops and accompanying tank attacks, were now often used for defense and were conveniently equipped with stronger firepower as a mobile weapons platform. The modification work was carried out in December 1944. Due to the lack of a turret and other structures, a small platform was welded in the front section of the crew compartment, and the gun was installed on this platform. The original gun shield structure was retained to provide necessary frontal protection for the gun crew. Ammunition was stored in an ammunition box under the gun on the right, which could hold about 10 rounds and additional wooden ammunition boxes could be placed directly on the crew compartment floor. The gun could only be adjusted to a certain angle forward, without 360 degrees rotation capability. Since the gun occupied the original machine gun position, the SDKFZ-251-22 was not equipped with an auxiliary machine gun and crew members had to rely on their own light weapons for self-defense. The maneuverability of the SDKFZ-251-22 was similar to the SDKFZ-251 armored vehicle, and the striking ability of the gun was sufficient to deal with medium tanks such as the T-34. However, the armor protection was still poor, maintaining the original 7 to 12 mm body armor, as the firepower level in the later stages of World War II had far surpassed the earlier period, and even anti-tank guns posed a serious threat to it. Another issue was the large height of the vehicle. The Sturmgeschutz III or Jagdpanzer, which also had forward-facing guns, had a height of only about one person's height. However, due to structural issues, the gun of the SDKFZ-251-22 had to be placed at a higher position, with a frontal height similar to that of the T-34-85, inadvertently increasing the probability of being hit, and the weak armor lacked defensive capabilities, greatly reducing its survivability. Although the SDKFZ-251-22 was just a temporary makeshift armored weapon, it was still an equipment that the German army urgently needed at the time. In the approximately six months before the German surrender, 268 units were still produced, despite the fact that the factories were in ruins, which shows how much importance Germany placed on it at the time. Contrary to the expectations of the German high command, these SDKFZ-251-22 tank destroyers did not play a significant role. At this time, the German army lacked well-trained soldiers, and the remaining elite were diverted to operate heavy equipment such as the Tiger tank. 
a group of inexperienced soldiers operating in already subpar equipment made it difficult to replicate the glorious achievements of a few years earlier.